Today's Ask the Doctor segment is all about urinary incontinence. I'm joined by Dr. Brent Parnell with uh, OBGYN South. Uh, he is here to answer your questions about incontinence. Give us a call right now, 205-741-9272, if you have a question about incontinence. We already have one caller on the phone, Lynn from Midfield. Lynn, what is your question? Good morning. My question is, um, I will be sitting or laying down and not feel the urge to have to, to urinate, but then as soon as I get vertical, it's, it's like a rush to the bathroom, and sometimes I make it and sometimes I don't. Is that a sign of urinary incontinence? Yes, ma'am. That's actually a very common type of incontinence called overactive bladder or urge urinary incontinence. Um, typically, overactive bladder or urge urinary incontinence is when you feel a strong urge to go to the bathroom and then can't make it in time. And many times that will be the type of incontinence where uh, instead of losing a small amount of urine, you actually feel like you're emptying your bladder or actually peeing. Um, so what you're experiencing is actually very common. About one out of seven women in the United States actually have that problem. So you're uh, in actually a very common group of women. Typical treatments for that might include um, doing different things to your diet, like avoiding caffeinated beverages uh, or watching your fluid intake um, prior to going to bed. But uh, other common things are medications. And then when medications fail, um, we have other things that we can do, like Botox in your bladder, or even certain types of nerve stimulation. So uh, it's a very common problem and uh, affects a lot of women. Our next caller, Michelle from Birmingham. Michelle, what is your question? Michelle, do we still have you? Uh, apparently, we've, uh, we've, we have lost her, but let me um, go back to something. You said one in seven women have this, so it's very common, but it's something people don't want to talk about. At what point should a woman bring this up to her doctor? Absolutely. So yeah, one in seven women has overactive bladder. One in four women actually has some type of mm -hmm. pelvic floor disorder that could include stress urinary incontinence, um, urge urinary incontinence, or prolapse. So at any point in time that this becomes bothersome to the point that it's affecting your quality of life, uh, that's a great time to start talking with your primary care physician, OBGYN, or someone like me who specializes in uh, female pelvic floor disorders. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about women uh, through all of this, but men can have uh, some issues as well. Right? Absolutely. So commonly men will develop um, problems like this associated with prostate problems. And certainly if you developed problems uh, like that, it'd be a great time to see a urologist. Okay. Uh, we have another caller, Rosemary in Eastlake. Rosemary, what's your question? Uh, we're having, uh, I, I'm not sure if this is an audio issue or if we are just not. Uh, Hello. There we go. Rosemary, uh, can you uh, tell us what's your question? Okay. Um, my question was, I know I heard the lady say earlier about the urge to go to the bathroom and come faster when you get up. But I'm also have uh, back pain in the lower part of my back, and I'm just trying to see would that be that or would it be kidney from? Uh, that could be a variety of things. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what that might be, but many times when women experience various types of um, difficulty emptying their bladder, they can develop um, a sense of fullness or pressure in their back. That can also happen with various types of pelvic floor disorders, including prolapse. Um, but certainly if you're having lower back pain, the first place to start would be with your primary care doctor. Uh, doctor, talk some about the treatments. Uh, there are, are there some new things that have come along recently? Absolutely. So when we're talking about stress urinary incontinence, which is leaking with coughing, sneezing, um, or with certain types of physical activities, there are a lot of simple things you can do, like Kegel exercises a lot of women are uh, familiar with. Um, but many times we do end up doing surgery for that. So some of the standard surgeries for treating stress urinary incontinence might be something like a birch procedure where we use stitches to support the bladder neck, uh, or the most common surgery is a sling procedure. Now a lot of people have heard about slings, unfortunately, mm -hmm. in a negative way, 
uh, on the various commercials. Um, but the facts are that the sling procedures remain the most common surgery for, for treating stress urinary incontinence and are fully supported by all the literature and by all the professional organizations that take care of women, uh, including our organization, ACOG, uh, which is the College of OBGYN, and AUGS, which is the American Urogynecologic Society. So slings are quick, minimally invasive, safe, and uh, are not associated with any um, of the common things that you see on those commercials. All right, uh, another caller, yes, Mary. Mary from uh, Mount Olive. Mary, what's your question? Uh, yes, I'm having severe pain in my pelvic area. I do believe it's my bladder. When I first start urinating for the day, it begins to burn severely, and there are uh, there's uh, no um, help, you know, for the pelvic pain and um, it's just really burning really bad and I have no female organs so I'm wondering if my, my bladder could have dropped and causing a little incontinence. Yes, ma'am. There are a variety of different things that can cause burning with urination or some of the symptoms that you're describing. The most common would be a bladder infection. Um, after making sure that it's not a bladder infection, there are other things, uh, including bladder problems, as well as pelvic floor muscle problems that can cause those symptoms. So the list of things that can cause those symptoms is extensive. Uh, commonly, women do have um, prolapse of the bladder. Um, that, generally speaking, doesn't cause a tremendous amount of burning. Um, but certainly, if you have those symptoms, then visiting with one of your doctors, primary care doctor or your OBGYN, uh, would be a great place to start. All right. Dr. Parnell, thanks for being with us. Uh, obviously, a lot of questions out there. We thank our callers as well. We'll be back with more in just a moment.